You, you did that perfectly, Dave, and we are starting right on time with our three faculty speakers, the first of whom is Kate Kellogg. Kate, welcome. I'm delighted to be here today to talk to you about the impact of generative AI on knowledge workers. And I'm going to be talking about um, an experiment that I did with some colleagues from Harvard Business School, Wharton, uh, Warwick Business School, um, and um, uh, some colleagues from Boston Consulting Group. And the big picture is that generative AI has the potential to um, provide tremendous gains in knowledge, uh, in performance for knowledge workers. But it raises three key challenges that we found in our experiment, the jagged frontier of AI capabilities, the tricky problem of creativity, and gen AI as a skill leveler. So organizational leaders need to address these challenges in order to facilitate effective implementation of generative AI in their organizations. Let me tell you about the experiment. We did the experiment with 758 BCG consultants, and we randomized them into two groups. Um, one of the groups, we gave an idea generation and business writing task, which was inside the frontier of generative AI capabilities. And the second group, we gave a task, a problem solving task that was specifically designed to be outside the frontier of generative AI capabilities. Within each group, there were three conditions. Some people had no access to AI, some people had access to GPT-4, and some people we gave a brief prompt engineering overview before the experiment. We tested this on different outcomes. And the first finding is that within the frontier, generative AI can provide tremendous gains in productivity, efficiency, and the quality of work. So here's the inside the frontier task that we gave the consultants. We said, you're working for a footwear company. Generate ideas for a new shoe. Pick the best idea and explain why. Describe a potential prototype shoe in vivid detail. Come up with a list of steps. So we gave them a series of subtasks. And what we found is inside the frontier, the people who were given access to generative AI performed much better. They accomplished 12.5% more work, 26% faster, with 40% higher quality. This held across every subtask, every um, regression, whether they were graded by human graders or by GPT. So, um, so although we found these great gains in performance, one of the challenges that we found is what we call this jagged frontier of capabilities. So for the outside the frontier task, which we carefully designed, any of you who have ever done a consulting interview will recognize this kind of problem. Um, we said the CEO wants to understand performance by the company's three brands, the men, women, and kids. Um, and so the CEO uh, has to pick one of these brands. We're going to give you interviews from company insiders and an Excel spreadsheet with financial data broken down by the brands. And we want you to tell us which brand should the CEO pick to focus on, give a rationale for the choice, and also suggest innovative and tactical actions the CEO can take. Here, the people with AI did worse. So if the consultants without AI got the brand correct 85% of the time versus 71% of the time with AI. And so what happened here is that the people who were given AI took GPT-4's misleading output at face value and performed worse. Um, perhaps uh, as interestingly, um, our brief training backfired. The people that we gave the brief upfront training got the answer correct only 60% of the time. So we are unpacking these results right now, uh, but we're wondering whether this was because people were overconfident when they had this initial upfront training. We also found that generative AI can be highly convincing even when incorrect. So the graph on the left here is showing that for the people who got the brand recommendation correct, they increased the quality of their recommendation when they had access to AI. But even for the people on the right who got the incorrect recommendation, they also were rated as having high quality recommendations. So even when judged by human graders, Generative AI can be uh, deceptively convincing if you don't know where the frontier lies. 
In summary, generative AI can boost productivity and quality inside the frontier, but be counterproductive outside the frontier. Um, so what this means for organizational leaders is that if they're going to introduce AI in their organizations, they need to develop solutions to address this problem. And in our experiment, we didn't test solutions, but we have experience from studying predictive AI over the last number of years to suggest some solutions that could be tested in future research. So for this issue of differential effects inside and outside the frontier, what leaders can test is agreeing on the highest value use cases in, for Gen AI in their organizations and guiding knowledge workers to use generative AI for those use cases and not others. They can also create a center of excellence to improve the accuracy of AI with their own software layer on top of the public LLM. Another issue this raises is that people could be raising issues for downstream stakeholders. So in the case of consultants, that could be clients. In the medical setting, this could be doctors using generative AI and affecting patients. Um, and so leaders need to conduct preemptive risk analysis for these different stakeholder groups and establish AI governance standards to guide AI use. The second um, issue we surfaced in our experiment is what we call the tricky problem of creativity. Here was the inside the frontier task again, and as you can see, we asked people to be creative as they came up with these ideas for the new shoe. And indeed, we found that people with GPT had higher answer quality. So they had higher creativity when they used G, uh, GPT and when they accepted more of the GPT output in their answer. So for individuals, the use of GPT allowed them to be more creative. But we also found that as a collective, it reduced creativity. So generative AI alone and humans with generative AI had more similar ideas than humans alone had. And so what this suggests is that um, while generative AI can increase idea quality for individuals, it can lead to collective idea convergence, which can be problematic for organizations. So what can organizations do about this? They can test whether the use of multiple LLMs helps to increase both quality and variability of ideas, and they can identify human AI practices that increase both quality and variability. So one thing we're looking at now is for everybody in the experiment who had access to uh, generative AI, we have detailed logs of how they interacted with generative AI. And so right now we're looking to see if there's certain practices that were associated with both increased quality and greater variability. Finally, we found uh, the challenge of generative AI as a skill leveler. So consultants who were below average performer on the initial assessment test increased their performance by 43% of, with generative AI versus those above average who increased their performance by only 17%. So this suggests that lower skilled workers benefited from generative AI use more than higher skilled workers, and other researchers are beginning to find this as well. For organizational leaders, this suggests that there's going to be a need for reskilling and role reconfiguration inside the organizations. And so for this issue of allowing lower skilled workers to operate at a higher level, um, what leaders can do is assign lower skilled workers to tasks they can perform with AI and train them to use AI effectively. So for example, if you can imagine in a medical setting, perhaps now with the use of AI, medical assistants can do things that doctors used to need to do. And so you would need to train them well to like use generative AI with those tasks. But what it also means um, is that now they're going to be doing tasks that higher skilled workers were doing before. So you need some kind of role reconfiguration. And in a past study that I did with predictive AI, I found that something called experimentalist governance can work well, which is essentially running many local experiments where teams experiment with using AI and reconfiguring their roles, and then also having a central review team composed of workers from each position within the team who review the results, remove local roadblocks, and select the best solutions for scaling across the organization. 
So I've talked about a lot of things today, but the most important things to take away from the presentation is that even for highly skilled knowledge workers, generative AI can yield tremendous gains in performance, but it can also raise particular challenges, and leaders will need to um, put in place solutions to these challenges in order for knowledge workers to effectively use AI. Thank you. Sure. We don't have a lot of time for Q&A. Uh, at the moment, we have a lot of time for Q&A at the end of uh, the afternoon, but Kate has a couple more minutes, uh, so go ahead, Kate. Sure, Sorry, just everybody. shout loudly. We're not yeah. going to waste time doing it at the moment. Just yeah, go ahead. Forward. Anybody have any questions? I was just so persuasive. In the way back. So you talk about, at the end there, lower skilled workers to operate at a higher level. Have you put any thought about what that could look like five, 10 years as part of lower skill workers become more capable, farther along in the careers. What is kind of the tail of that as they become higher skilled workers? What are different experiments or opportunities that once they have that generative AI base, when they're starting out, what could that look like? You know, when they're- mm -hmm. you know, kind of, So you're saying like, how could they continue to learn and grow? Um, so one thing that I've thought about a little bit um, is that if you think about many of these professional services firms, for example, you know, they're currently pyramid structures, right? So one thing that's going to happen, I think, with generative AI is a lot of the things that that very lowest uh, rung in the pyramid have been doing are now going to be able to be done much more quickly with, for example, a human plus AI. So I think we're going to see organizations going from looking like this to going to looking more like this. And one problem that raises for organizations is now we've kind of eliminated the lowest rung on the ladder of skilling. And so how do you now fill the other rungs of the ladder? And so um, one thing is just within organizations, you know, HR functions needing to plan for this. Um, but in terms of thinking about you know, how can you continue to reskill workers with AI, um, I think it's things like, you know, kind of broader, of course you want to do on-the-job training, and I think organizational leaders can play a big role in reskilling workers within the organization from one role into new roles. I think we're going to see a lot of new roles and new tasks being added with generative AI. But I also think we're going to need a larger infrastructure where there's community colleges uh, collaborating with organizations who are offering apprenticeships. So a lot of the workforce development that's going on now already will need to be done with the context of AI. I think one big challenge is that it's changing so quickly that we need to even understand what are the competencies that people are going to need. So there's just going to be this just rapid iteration a lot with scaling. Sorry. <laughs>